you recognize that word? Cuidado. It is in Spanish. What does it mean? Careful, right? Be careful. Caution. Be careful. What I need you to be careful about is that the negative square root of 2 does not equal i square root of 2. Negative square root of 2 equals negative square root of 2. The only time we get i is when the negative is where? Inside. Inside the radical, right? Inside. Does everybody understand that? Okay. Look at this circle that's right there beside it. I want to talk about this for a little bit. Is this a true statement, i equals i? You guys agree with that? How do I get i squared? i times i, right? i times times i. We said was i squared, right? Well, what did we just decide i was equal to? The square root of negative 1, right? Well, what's the square root of negative 1 times the square root of negative 1? If I multiply two square roots together, what do I get? The number that's inside, right? Well, what's the number that's inside? Negative 1. So i squared actually equals negative 1. Okay? Well, how do we get i to the third? Isn't that i squared times i? Couldn't we get i to the third that way? Well, what did we just decide i squared was equal? Well, what's negative 1 times i? Negative i, yeah i to the third is actually equal to negative i. Which takes us to i to the fourth, right? Couldn't I get i to the fourth by saying i to the third times i? Isn't that i to the fourth? Well, what did we just decide i to the third was? Negative i. And i is just i. Well, what's negative i times i? negative i squared, but what did we decide i squared was? So what's a negative negative 1? Positive 1. If you see i to the fourth, that's the same as 1. Which brings us to what? Oh. i to the fifth, right? Isn't i to the fourth times i equal, sorry, equal i to the fifth? What did we just decide i to the fourth was? One. What's one times i? So i to the fifth is equal to i. Guess what i to the sixth is equal to? Negative one. And i to the seventh? And i to the eighth? And the ninth? And i to the tenth? How far could we go? Uh-huh. Right? So, like, on a test, I could actually ask you, what's i to the 175th power? Do you want to sit here and count to 175? What could you do? Divide by 4, right? And your remainder would tell you which one you need to go to, right? If it was 0 0.5, if it was 0 0.25, 0 0.75, right? Wouldn't that tell you what your answer was then? Any questions about the circle? Kind of cool. Okay, so let's close that tab. On the front of that tab, we are going to give ourselves a reminder that i actually equals what? Square root of negative 1. Okay. Let's go down to the next tab. Complex numbers, a plus bi, and graphing complex numbers. Okay. So first of all, complex numbers are written in a very specific form, and that form is a plus b i. A plus b i. Okay. The a is the real part. The b i is fake. not fake. imaginary part. How are you going to be able to tell which one's the real part and which one's the imaginary part? Which one's the 
the one with the eye is which part? Imaginary. Imaginary. Okay. Any questions so far? Okay. So we can graph complex numbers because there's such thing as called the complex plane. The real axis is left and right. It's not the x-axis anymore when we're dealing with the complex plane. It's the real axis. And the vertical axis that goes up and down is the imaginary axis. So what, what if I asked you to graph the number 3? How would we graph that? Well, is that real or imaginary? Real. It's real. So I would go over 3 and there. put a dot. What if I ask you to graph 2i? Up 2, right? That's the imaginary axis, so I go up 2 and put a dot. Very good. What if I ask you to graph 2 minus 2i? Two two Over to 2. Down to 2i. Two two very, very good. And then what if I ask you to graph negative 1 minus 4i? Or sorry, minus 3i. Go to minus 1. Down, right? Mm -hmm. You guys are pretty good at that. You want me to put like a bunch of those on the test? We okay so far though? Okay. Let's go up to adding, subtracting, and multiplying complex numbers. Okay. Now, is I a variable? It's not, right? It's an imaginary unit. It tells you which part is the imaginary part of a complex numbers. But can I act like a variable? Yes. yes. Okay. So when I'm when I'm adding complex numbers, I can only add or subtract real parts, and I can only add or subtract imaginary parts. When's the only time you can add real and imaginary? The only time. Space Jam. That's the only time it works to add real parts and imaginary parts. I did say Space Jam. Have you ever seen that? I know the movie. Yeah, the movie. That's what I'm talking about. See how that adds real parts and imaginary parts? I guess technically who framed Roger Rabbit, but I don't think they know that movie. No. Okay. You know it? Okay, awesome. So there's two times that adding real parts and imaginary parts works. Got it? What? Yeah, that's all imaginary, right? Okay. So if we're adding real parts, real plus real, then I would say 2 plus 3. Plus three. What is 2 plus 3? Five. 5. And then I could combine imaginary parts. What is 5i and negative 2i? 3i. Same works for subtraction. 4 minus 2. Mm -hmm. Yep, I even wrote that right here. That's exactly right. It is like combining like terms. And then negative 3i minus negative 5i. Positive 2i, right? Because it's negative 3i minus a negative 5i. What happens right here? We're adding, right? Okay. Any questions about that? Now I'm going to come over here to the side, right here, where we're not writing anything. I'm going to write something for you. Just like, just like a variable, right? Can I add 3 plus 5x? No, because they're not like terms. But can I multiply 2 times 3 and then multiply 2 times 5x? So remember how we talked about it being like a variable? i is like a variable. Can I add 3 plus 5i? No. Can I multiply 2 times 3 and 2 times 5i? Yes. Okay. That works. So now let's look at multiplying complex numbers. Negative 10i times 2i. Negative 20i squared. But... What's true about that? That's negative 1. This is negative 1. So really what I have is what? Negative 20 times negative 1, which is what? 
twenty. How do I do a problem like this? Distribute, right? So two times three is what? Six. Six. Two times negative five i is what? Negative ten i. Three i times three is what? Nine i. And then three i times negative five i is what? Negative fifteen i squared. So what do I do with these two? Combine them, but what do I do with this? That's negative one, so my real part then is what? Six and 15. What is six plus 15? 21, right? Do you understand that this is not negative 15 and negative one to make negative 16? We're not adding these two numbers together. Do you see that? We're multiplying because it was 15 times I squared, so it would be negative 15 times negative one. Does everybody understand that that's plus 15? Okay, what do I do with the imaginary parts? And what do I get? So minus I. Could I put minus one I? But could I also put minus I? Does it matter? No, it does not. Very good. Okay. Any questions about adding or subtracting? Let's close that one. Let's slide down to this last tab. Complex conjugates. We already discussed conjugates last week. Do you remember that? Do you remember the word conjugates? We talked about the word conjugates. And we had, we couldn't leave a square root in the denominator of a fraction, so we had to find the conjugate. Do you remember how we found the conjugate? We left the number alone, and what did we do with the root? It was the opposite. Yeah, that's right, it was the opposite. Okay, guess what we're going to do with complex conjugates now? What's going to happen with the real parts? It stays the same. What happens to the imaginary parts? It's opposite. Okay? So complex conjugates, A plus BI and A minus BI are complex conjugates. Their sum is a real number and their product is a real number. So what I mean is there's some, like if I added these two things together, what's A plus A? 2A, right, 2A, we're adding, not multiplying, right? And what's BI plus negative BI? Zero. Isn't 2A a real number? Because that's the real part, right? Now if I multiplied it out, if I distributed, I would end up, just like I did here, I would end, end up with a negative and a positive, the only difference are these are different in this example, and in the complex conjugates, they would be the same. So what would happen with those two middle terms? Yeah, it would go to zero, definitely. Okay, so I would end up with a six and a I squared term. So I would end up with just the real part. Does that make sense? Yes, okay. So first of all, let's practice finding complex conjugates. Okay, what is the conjugate of eight plus five I? 8 minus 5i. What is the conjugate of 4 minus 3i? 4 plus 3i. 4 plus 3i. What's the conjugate of 6? 6. Because what happens to the real part? It stays, right? And then the last one, what, what's the conjugate of 4i? Which, as a quick aside, quick commercial break, is my favorite imaginary number? Because it was also my nickname when I was growing up. Yeah. So, 4i. Four four I. Um, what is the complex conjugate of 4i? Negative 4i. Four four I. Yeah, I, I, turn my hum I turn it into humor to mask my pain. It's fine. Same. Okay, good. <laughs> to simplify a complex number in the denominator, multiply by 1. Can we leave complex numbers in the denominator? No. no, we cannot leave any imaginary numbers in the denominator, okay? So if we have a, a complex number in the denominator, we have to multiply it by one to be able to simplify it. But our definition of one is what we choose. And what we're always gonna choose is the conjugate 
of the denominator divided by the conjugate of the denominator. Now, last period they said, that's weird. And I was like, yes it is, right? But only thing I can multiply by something that it doesn't change the value is one, right? But I get to choose the value of one that I, that I want to to make that um, complex number in the denominator go away. That's the only way I can simplify it is by making it go away. And I make it go away by choosing the conjugate of the denominator, okay? So let's look at this first example, seven divided by three i. Well, what is the complex conjugate of three i? Uh, negative three i. Negative three i. So if I multiply numerator and denominator by negative three i, watch what happens. Uh, it cancels out and it becomes on the top. What is seven times negative three i? Negative twenty-one i. Negative twenty-one i. What is three i times negative three i? Negative Negative nine i squared, very good. But that's negative one, right? So what I have is negative 21 i divided by nine. But I promise if you put that in as the answer, it will say it's wrong. And there's imaginary numbers too. The imaginary numbers in the numerator and that's okay. Good guess. It should be, you can simplify, you can simplify it, can't you? They're both divisible by what? Three. three. So divide them both by three. What do you end up with? Divided by three. Now, you know and I know that somebody's going to see this problem and this answer and say, oh, okay, so we just move the I up and make a negative? No, it just happened to be that in this example. And I did this one on purpose so you can see that uh, that's not really what happened because if the, if this was a different number that wouldn't simplify as easy would it okay so don't just automatically think that just because this example happened to be that way don't always think that and for proof let's do one more example okay six plus four i divided by two minus i so what is the complex conjugate of the denominator six minus four i Negative, two plus i. Two plus i, right? It's the denominator uh, that we have okay. to choose, right? So two plus i divided by two plus i. So is it okay if we start in the numerator? Yes. Okay, six times two. Twelve. Six times i. Six, six i. Four i times two. And 4i times i. 4i squared. Okay, so far? Denominator, 2 times 2. 4. 2 times i. 2i. Negative i times 2. And negative i times i. i squared. Minus i squared, yep, that's right. So in the numerator, First of all, we have these two things we have to deal with, right? And then we have that to deal with. What does i squared equal? So what I have in the numerator is 12 minus 4. 8. And then I have, for the imaginary part, 6i plus 8i. 14i, yep. Now in the denominator, I have these two things to deal with, but this is really nice because what happened? Yeah, that's zero, isn't it? And what happens here? Uh, negative, one. negative one. So what is minus and negative one? Sorry. One. Yeah. So I have four plus one. So five. Uh, yes. Because okay. there is no imaginary number where? In the denominator. Okay, so far? Can I show you something? Something's weird with my projector because no way that I put this will it be easy to see. And I don't know why it's doing that. It's just mad.
I think it's mad that I was gone for three days. Like it won't. It's just freaking out. Like it won't focus. Focus. Oh, like it almost gets there and it just starts to refocus again. Here. Okay, just stop, 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 stop. Okay, all right, here's what I want to show you. I want to make a fraction, and it, now it's not going to let me let you see it. Where can I put it so that you can see it? I don't know. Maybe if I zoom in a little bit more. Okay, let's try this. I, make, I made a fraction. I'm going to put in 6 plus 4i. And then two minus i. Is that what we got? Eight over five plus fourteen over five i. Is that what I got? Eight over five plus fourteen over five i. So I can do this in my calculator? So I could put 7 over 3i It's there, I promise. It's just being rude today, I guess. Here's what you can't do. 6 6 plus 4i over 2 minus i. That's what you can't do. What's different from here and here? You didn't use the right type of i? That's correct. This i that I used right here comes from this button down here, the pi button, not the letter i. This letter I is a variable. And some of yours might actually tell you a number. Mine doesn't have a number in it. It says error uh, variable is not defined because I don't have a value stored in I. Okay, if I did, it would actually tell me a number as my answer. But we know that's not true because our answers have to contain an I. You have to use this button right here that says pi on it. Here we go, pi. And when I press that pi button, this is the menu that comes up on your screen. Pi, i, infinity, all sorts of different things. We want that i. Does everybody understand? Yes. Mm -hmm. Any questions about that?